Welcome to this Eric Hepperly Designs tutorial on HTML5 local storage for beginners. Hey guys, this is Eric and today we are going to learn some basics about HTML's local storage feature. We will create a small program in JavaScript that will map a people array to a country's array and output the results. Now local storage is essentially a global like variable that is accessible by any page in your browser. There are lots of perspectives on whether one should use globals in programming and when, but that is beyond the scope of today's tutorial. Now when HTML5 first came out several years ago, interviewers had fun testing coders by asking questions about the new HTML5 features. Many developers quickly became aware of basic, easy to use and understand new features like the video and audio tags, for instance. However, several more advanced features were known only to a dedicated few. Two of those more advanced HTML5 features are local storage and session storage, both closely related. Don't worry if you've never heard of these or have heard of them but don't understand what their purpose is. We are going to hopefully clear that up for you today and also walk you through a complete working ES6 JavaScript example to demonstrate how easy it can be to use local storage. Now those unfamiliar with ES6, this is the new ECMAScript 2015 standard and it is the new official JavaScript release that is in common usage. Its biggest advantage is that you can use jQuery-like selectors instead of having to use the cumbersome document, document .get element by id method of targeting and selecting DOM elements, though that still works also. It also means you don't have any dependencies uh, that you have to call or include in your browser. Now, before HTML5, we had what are called cookies, and we still have those today. And so cookies are the old standard, and what they are is text files that are stored on your browser and the server. Uh, usually they're generated through the browser and created on the server. They're sent to the server on every single request. So cookies are still in use and are best for data, um, loading images, CSS files, any kind of links or um, uh, rel, you know, rel tags, you're linking a style sheet or fonts and stuff like that. Anything that has to be accessed by a server and a local machine. They're great um, for authentication because they're the most secure method. Uh, I hope I'm getting that right. I'm pretty sure. Uh, they are the most secure method of and that's uh, of data storage and, and uh, state management that you can use, especially when working with sensitive data, personal data, logins, uh, financial data, etc. Uh, one of the disadvantages is they can only store four kilobytes of data, which is very, very small. But they do work with older browsers that don't understand HTML5. So if anybody's using um, older browsers on their machines or um, perhaps embedded browsers in, in, uh, in embedded digital devices. Now local storage some advantage that local storage has over cookies is local storage never expires. I mean, um, so cookies, cookies you'd set an expiration, you know, it's going to be uh, a day or a week or whatever, and generally you'd set it in seconds, right? Well, local storage never expires. You don't set an expiration on it. Uh, it only goes away when you manually clear it. So if you run... A, a hard drive cleaning program like a C cleaner or something like that. Um, that's a great one, and that'll clean out your local storage. But you can also manually just go into local storage 
and I'll show you how to do that right now. So let's say I've got, I'm going to run this program. Now all this data here is stored in local storage. So how can I see that? I'll clear the console. What I'll do is I'll go into, in my Chrome console, I'll go into the application tab. And you see I'm already on local storage. But if I was uh, here, manifest or something, just go down to local storage and then look at your file. The local storage is only going to show you the local storage for this particular web uh, tab. So right now, the only thing I have in here are these values, these key value pairs. Okay, so to clear it out, I just right click and do clear. Boom, it's gone. That's how easy it is. All right, let's get back to the console. Now, um, local storage is never sent to the server. So you don't need a server to use local storage. I mean, it's great for client-side browser applications. Uh, so for instance, um, one thing that I, I think it would probably be pretty good for is, let's say you were making a browser app to do a salary calculator. Okay, so you put in the hours you worked per week, and then it calculates what that is in annual salary. That would be a good application for local storage because you're just using simple uh, data types you're not using you know you're not storing any arrays or objects or anything like that or you don't need to you can just store uh, the salary amount and then you can run a simple function on it and by the beam get back the results without having to to use a, a server cost or anything like that uh, also it's accessible from, you know, you can access, access local storage from any browser um, on the same computer. And the local storage has 10 megabytes capacity. That is huge. Now, another alternative to local storage that came out with uh, HTML5 is session storage. And the difference between local storage and session storage is that session storage applies only to the current browser tab and expires when you close the tab. So that's interesting. Um, let's test that out. I'm going to, so right now I'm in F11, which is how I get rid of showing all that and just give you the, the clear stuff. But let's say I close this tab. Whoop, that wasn't the tab. Okay, so I'm out of F11, and if I take this tab, let's see if we have anything in uh, local storage. Nope, that's cleared out. So I'll go up in uh, here. We'll bring back the code I had originally. That'll put all that right here into local storage. And go over here to application and see now we've got that loaded in there. So I'll go back to console, and I'll just close out this tab to show you. I bring the tab back and say uh, history, bring that tab back, and F12 to open the console again. And then if I go local storage, it's still there. So as long as I don't close the browser, local storage will hold that. Now, if I go look at uh, session storage, we didn't do anything with session storage, and so there's nothing in there. But basically, you can do that. You can do the same thing. You can go uh, session storage dot set item. Um, let's say fruit, and then apple. Try something like that. All right? And then session storage. Boom! My fruit is in there. Set as apple good to go one out and you can clear that out over here as well so all right so now that I've showed you that let's close that out <clears throat> and let's go through some things real quickly all right 
So what I'm going to do, I always start my scripts that I do in the console with um, a console.clear. Like that. If I hit enter, what's it do? It says console was cleared. So assuming I had, let's say, a script or something. See, maybe I can just no, that's accomplishments. Mess with that. Here, I can just take all that. Assuming I had all that, throw that on there, and say enter. And then if I started typing, you know, x plus two equals five, should get an error because x isn't in there. I say x equals three, x plus five, x plus five and then it gives me eight right but you can see all this stuff is down here at the bottom and if you've got code it's going to go off the screen so this is what the console.clear does i'll show you i just hit that boom and cleared all that for us okay so like i said we'll do a console.clear and ironically i have to manually clear the screen so that that's the only thing on there and then we'll do a uh, local storage dot clear because there's a built-in clear method. And what you'll see is right now in local storage, I have all this data that I stored, right? These key value pairs uh, of people in the countries that they're from. But as soon as I do local storage dot clear, now you can see it's all gone. So that's just one way you can do it. Like you can come over here and you can manually do clear or you can run it programmatically. So we're going to do it programmatically and for uh for the sake of time I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste these arrays that I've made already in for you. And so <clears throat> so we've got the console clear, local storage clear. Now we're starting with with the clean slate. All right. So I set up this array, people, with seven names, and I set up country with seven names. Now, if we were doing a database application or something, we would just use, like you see USA is in there twice, we would have these countries all set up uh, in a database table, and each country would have its own ID, and so this would call that ID reference for USA. But we're not going to bother with that. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Uh, and this is a simple way to show you how to do this and how you can use local storage easily. Okay. So, um, so I got these two arrays, and if I hit enter, those arrays are going to be stored in the browser's memory. So I should be able to type in people and hit enter and see, oh, there I've got it. And it tells me I got seven people in there seven items and I can see them all going to down you see uh, of course JavaScript is a base zero numbers uh, indexed array system so we start counting at zero and and go on from there so we got seven items now we'll see make sure we have uh, make sure we have our countries Okay, we've got our seven countries so we've got our arrays set up properly and everything should map uh, correctly so first we're going to go ahead and do a uh, console.log this is a trick I like to do right console.log you know is how you print to uh, the console but not everybody's like this but me I, I I'm kind of a visual person so what I like to do is put an orange bar to separate my data from the code all right so my results from the code so I'm going to just do a bunch of spaces with that percent C that tells that I'm going to do some formatting and then I set the format that I'm going to do here some uh, CSS formatting so I'm going to go background orange pretty simple and I'm not putting any any data in there just a blank bar so close that off and if I bring that over you'll be able to see what that does that just makes a, a blank bar and 
Well, let's say I just want it a little bit longer. We'll do that. Let's verify that. Whoop. There we go. B. Okay. I like it like that. All right. Now we're going to go ahead. So that's a, that's a styling, uh, an organization issue. So now we're going to go ahead and loop through each one of these arrays. I'll show you how we're going to do that. So first we're going to loop, loop, loop the person arrays. Loop through people. Okay. So for bar j equals zero, j is less than person. Oh, this should be people, shouldn't it? People dot length plus plus j. Okay. Now. I'm sure if you've been creating JavaScript or any kind of uh, uh, code for a while, you, you're familiar with for loops. This is just a simple for loop. And we're going to set the initial value for the counter at zero. And then while the count is less than the length of people, so the people array has seven, so while the count is less than seven, uh, we'll go ahead and increment and we'll keep looping around. Now the plus plus coming before the J, that is a technique that I learned from my C++ instructor who used to make, uh, she was a designer in the 80s of flight simulators for the military. And it had to be very real time and very uh, accurate. And if you do uh, like your count with the plus plus after it, sometimes there can lead to off by one errors by doing that. So I always do plus plus in front because that's what she taught me. And she did say that that's not something that's commonly known among programmers. So, but I trust her. And so that's what I'm doing. I've never had a problem with it. All right. So that's our loop set up. So what we're going to do then is we'll set up a variable for the key. So we're going to say the key is going to be person uh, and j. So j is the number, so whatever j is. So at zero, zeros should be one. Uh, person one should be Julia. Person two should be Paolo, etc. All right. And we can console.log that just to verify that. And we can say person we can say person plus j to get the the count and then plus key okay and let's just see what that looks like so far uncaught syntax error missing after argument list all right, so let's see. Ah, and I spelled console.log log wrong. Okay, let's fix that. I think that might be what the real is. Nope, missing after argument list. Okay, let's see what we got here. Ah, I forgot to put a plus between the J and that uh, string. So let's put that plus in there and try it again. Console. And we have person is not defined. So let's see. Ah, that's right, because we used people, didn't we? People. All right. Yeah, this is troubleshooting and debugging. Pop it in there. Bingo. All right, I'm not going to bother putting that space in there. You can see what it did. So person zero is Juan, person one is Julia, person two is Paulo, person three is Francisco. So that all worked. All right. So my code is good so far. Now what we want to do 
is we're going to set the uh, value. So we're just setting it up like key value pairs. And I'm, I'm calling my variable key, and I'm calling a variable value um, for ease of understanding. So we're going to do countries. And this one is also going to be J. And we can go ahead and do a console.log on that one as well. Console.log country plus j plus colon plus value. Okay, now this will show us if we're getting what we're supposed to be. All right, so you see I cleared the screen. I got person zero, one, country zero, Colombia. That's right, one is from Colombia. Person one, Julia. Country 1, USA. Julia is from USA, so everything looks good. All right. And Tran is from Vietnam. Amy is from USA. Okay, good. So now, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to get all the keys from local storage. So I'm going to show you how to get the array keys. Get all keys from local storage. Okay. So we're going to do another for loop. So it's going to be for var. And this time I'm going to use i. It's arbitrary. I could have used i the first time, but I uh, this is the way I wrote it. So <laughs> this is the way we're doing it. And this time around, we're going to do uh, less than or equal to. Local storage. Local storage dot length. Oh no, that's interesting. That is interesting. So this is actually, now that we've got something in local storage, it's, what it's going to do is it's going to go through. Uh, well, actually, we don't have anything in local storage, do we? That's interesting. Yeah, so local storage dot length. That doesn't make any sense. Because we're not storing anything in there. We just have arrays right now, right? So let's make that You know what? Forgive me. This is what happens when you're doing stuff like Okay, so now we have our code, and we've got our loop, and we're looping through. We've got our people array and our countries array, and we've got keys and values being set up. Now let's put it in local storage. So what that looks like is this. To put an item in local storage programmatically, you say... Local storage uh, dot set item and we're going to set key and value just like that. So let's take a look at that and see what that see where that gets us. And set that key and value. Okay. Let's throw that in here. We got all those printed, and if we go to application, there's our keys and our values. 
Now, let's go ahead and clear that out for a second. Now, what if we, we've got the uh, local storage cleared out. Now, let's say we run this again, but we take out the local storage set, I, set item and hit enter. Go to application. That's not in local storage, is it? Nope. Okay. So there you see, that's how you can set item. Okay, so how do you retrieve and programmatically print out the local storage? All right. <clears throat> so this sets up your local storage right here. Loop through people. Store key value. Key value pairs in local storage. Okay. So now we're going to do another loop. And this is get all keys from local storage. Okay, so the way you do that is you'll run a for loop. So for, and we use a variable i this time. I could have used i last time, but I had it written differently, so that's, I ended up using j. We'll do i, while i is less than or equal to local storage dot length. So we put seven items in here. Local storage dot length should be seven i, seven. So it's going to do a, a seven loop right there and do our plus plus I, put our brackets in. Now let's go ahead and uh, we'll set the, the key variable here also. And this, is, this is a uh, local variable, right, that is pertains only to this function. That's why we can have the variable key in both of these functions and have it represent different things. So in this one, the key is going to be local storage dot key i. Okay. So whatever i is, she's going to print that out. So before we go any further, let's make sure that works. We'll go to console, pop that in here. Right, let's try it again. This time we'll use all the code. Ah, we're not printing anything out, are, are we? We need to do that. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, console dot log key. All right. Let's try that. Boom. Do we have all our keys? Well, let's see. Do we have seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sure do. I'm not sure what's up with the null at the end. Uh, if anybody that's watching this video knows, uh, let me know in the comments because I I'd love to get that one figured out. Um, oh, you know what? As much as I like comments, I think I may have figured it out. Take that equals out. Let's see if that fixes it. There might be an off by one error. Bingo. And the undefined is normal. We get that at the end. Cool. So we've got our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I'm going to clear the screen. Now, we know that that loop is working, so we're going to add one more variable to it. So we'll say var value equals, nope, actually I'm calling it item in this one. Item equals local storage dot get item key. So we use the key that we defined right here. We use that key as as the argument for the get item here. 
And then we should be able to print like this. Key. Let's do this. No, I don't want to do anything fancy and throw you off. Okay, so key plus. And then I'm going to do, this is called the fat comma. Use those a lot in uh, Perl backend programming. <clears throat> so key plus fat comma plus item. Okay. And then let's run all that. Let's see what we got. Ah, that's a little, okay. So it's a little hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this guy in Notepad++, which is what I'm using. You can use Control D to do a duplicate and then Control L to copy that. So I'm going to go down here and before I do that one, I'm going to come in. I'm going to put the word results and let's make the results. Oh, I don't know. Pink. That should show up well. Okay, let's try that. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so now we can clearly see the, the first test values and what the key value pair is. Okay, so this is our final result. Uh, I'll have a link to the code in the description below. Um, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put those in the, uh, you know, in the comments. Go ahead and put those below. I'm a new YouTuber. I've been watching YouTube videos for a long time, and now I'm trying to give back by, by doing my own uh, demonstrations and also to help myself learn by teaching. Uh, a wise person once said that you learn things better by teaching what you know even if you don't feel like you know too much. So I just figured this out. It's a lot easier than it looked like it was. So I just want to share that with you guys. And uh, yeah, if you like it, you know, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. And, and uh, I'll uh, look forward to your comments. And, and if you have suggestions for other videos that you'd like to see, let me know. I can say this is only the third video that I've made so far because it does take a lot of effort and time to uh, to make these videos. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say and and and, and what 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 you guys want to see. So to 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 for now and have a great day.